Zach Schiffman. Um, I work in the library in the e-learning sports services uh, department. I work specifically with Canvas. Um, prior to working at American University, I did work at Canvas. I was a, a, a support engineer uh, for about three years over there. Um, so it's uh, it's what I do every day. Um, if you uh, reach out to us, if you call us, if you email us at canvas at american.edu, um, it'll come to myself or uh, one of my uh, colleagues in our team. Um, and yeah, we are the ones who are here to help you with Canvas. Um, so with that, we will get started. Uh, so today we're going to be going over assignments and quizzes. Um, so with that, we'll cover creating assignments, creating quizzes, and then grading and processing those through the speed grader tool. Um, so as you can see here, I have a uh, blank demo course here. Um, it is uh, very much like the sandbox courses. Many of you have development courses. Um, if you don't have a sandbox or a development course to use to play around with, um, uh, you can just stop in uh, as soon as we're done here or uh, shoot us an email at canvas at american.edu and we can create one of those for you where you can play around in here, test things, create things, stuff like that. Um, so again, this is my blank course demo and today we're going to start with assignments. Um, so it's going to be starting over here in the left-hand course menu. Um, this little eye with a line through it here, um, you can see when I hover over it, it says no content, not visible to students. Um, so some of you may be familiar with uh, this menu is fully editable. We can change the order, change what shows, hide things, show things, things like that, depending on what you're using in your course. Um, but as it says here, even if you have something activated, like the assignments tool that I do have active here and the quizzes tool, uh, there's nothing within those right now. There's nothing active in those, so it will show that line. But once we create something, that'll go away for us. Uh, so we get to our assignments page here. We start with just an assignment group. So this is the group titled assignments. Um, as we create more assignments, we can create more groups here. It's just a means to subdivide um, the assignments into sections, groups, whatever. Uh, additionally, down the road, this is how we weight our courses uh, based off of the assignment groups. Anything that is graded, any uh, graded quiz or graded discussion will eventually go to the assignments page. Um, so again, Further a little bit down the road, covered in uh, 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 most likely a, a different training session uh, that covers modules and organization and things like that and grading. Um, but that is where it is done here. Um, but for this uh, for this session, we're going to try to try to keep it short here today, um, relatively speaking. Um, and we'll uh, focus on this blue plus assignment button here. This is how we create any of our assignments in the course. Um, we'll always start here. So when we click on that. Uh, it'll bring us to a page that we will get very familiar with if we're not already. Um, this is the very generic looking page we see when we create just about anything. Uh, we're going to have a title up here, assignment name, quiz name, discussion name, page name, whatever. And this is where we put the name, assignment one. And then down here is the details for the assignment, for the quiz, for the discussion. Um, you can see here again, very familiar formatting tools here for the most part uh, as we get through these. These are the ones where things get a little bit different. But again, uh, these are the tools you will use when you're creating anything. These will be on the top of uh, any discussion, quiz, assignment page that you're going to be creating. So you'll get very familiar with them very quick. Um, so again, after we have the assignment title, that's what students will see up at the top of the assignment. That's what they'll see in the grade book, how it's organized. Again, down here is more of the information. This assignment covers chapters two, three, and four. This assignment covers all of the taming of the shrew, whatever. Um, this is, again, totally free form um, for assignments here. This is where you'll put the prompt of, this is what we're doing for the assignment. I want you to read this and give me two paragraphs on whatever, you know. Uh, this is where we will put all of that information here. Uh, again, formatting-wise, we have all of our normal formatting things here. Uh, these tools that get a little bit more uh, specialized to Canvas, I should say, as we hover over them, it will give us a little bit of information for them. Uh, so these chain links, our links. So if you want to, oh, excuse me, sorry, that's my phone system that is not turned off. <laughs> excuse me about that. Uh, so again, links here. Um, uh, if you want to add a link to your course, a hyperlink to something external or something within your course, you can click on this little uh, carrot here next to it and you'll see we have the two options. External link, we have the text of taming of the shrew painting something like that, a painting about the book, whatever. And this is where we would put the hyperlink of what we were linking that content to. Once we click done, it'll create that hyperlink for us. Uh, for a course link, this is if we want to link to something else within the course. If you have a page or a file, or sorry, I, I should say a page, um, not a file, that'll be a different option. Uh, if you have a page that you want to link to in the course, we can click course link here. And you can see of the pages in the course right now, there are nothing. This is my blank course. But of pages you, you have created, you can link to them automatically here. 
Uh, I don't think I have anything in this course that we can link to. Um, oh, here we go. So, uh, for example, if you want to link to the grades page or something like that, you can say, hey, after you finish your assignment, check the grades page. You can create a hyperlink directly to that. And again, with any of these types of items. So if you've previously created something informationally that relates to this assignment, rather than recreating it, copy and pasting it and worrying about all that, we can directly link it to this linking tool. Uh, the next one here is going to be for images. And again, we have very similar options. We can upload an image from our device, upload from your device, give it an alt text, uh, things like that. The alt text is for um, uh, uh, screen readers and accessibility, things like that. Um, the other options, again, course images, if you've already uploaded images to your files section, you can upload them directly or you can select them from there. And user images, that is going to be if you have in your user files specific to you rather than specific to the course, uh, you can upload them directly to here as well. The next one with the little play button in the music node is going to be media, surprise. And again, we have course media, media that we have uploaded to the course and user media, media that we have uploaded to our user files. Similar, but again, just media files or just, just, just regular files. Uh, please pardon my little dog howling in the background. Um, and the last one is going to be documents. Again, very similar, uploading documents, course documents, user documents, things depending on where they're located. Uh, moving over to the right, this is going to be the Kaltura tool. Um, Kaltura is uh, AU's uh, affiliate media management program uh, editor tool system. Um, so it is automatically integrated. Um, if it's not, again, you can reach out to us and we can link up your Canvas course and your Kaltura course. It's very simple. Um, Sorry, I, I think it's very simple. One of my colleagues does it. I don't have that Kaltura access. She does. Um, but again, these are where you'll have all your Kaltura videos. If you've previously recorded something, this is the clip I want to add to this assignment. Click embed here. Very simple. And after it processes, we will see the video here. Um, so you can see uh, it's very easy to use this Kaltura tool. Again, it's already all set up um, and already linked for you there. Uh, another one we're going to have here, the next one, this little plug is going to be any of the external tools that have been attached to American University's Canvas or that you have attached to your respective Canvas course. All instructors do have the ability to add external tools to their Canvas courses. Um, so if you have added them, um, they will be here and all of the previously loaded ones that AU has added are also here. Uh, Google Apps, if you have something in Google that you wanna pull over, um, this will link them. In most cases, they should be pre, um, uh, if, again, if they're AU systems, uh, Microsoft Teams, things like that should link um, uh, automatically to your AU specific account. But for things like LinkedIn, if it may not be to your AU account, or if AU doesn't have an account, or if it's something you're using on your own, you may just need to, you know, you'll click it and it'll be like, log into your Pearson, play pause it, whatever, and then it'll link the content. It's always just gonna be a very simple login page most of the time. Most of the time, it's going to be a very simple login page, and you just log into your account. Same thing, YouTube. If you have a YouTube account where you have videos saved, uh, you'll click YouTube, and it'll pull up your account there, and you can select your videos there. Um, again, if you're having any trouble linking those, you can give us a call. Uh, we can help you on the Canvas side. Sometimes their tools are a little bit weird, um, but it, it's very rare that we're not able to get one of those set up. Most of the common ones, the Pearsons, the McGraw-Hills, those kinds of things, um, those are all very bad. We can always help you out with those guys. Uh, moving to the right, again, we just have more formatting options here, uh, alignment, if you want to create bullet points, uh, indents, things like that. Uh, here, if you want to do any formatting, removing any formatting, this just works really well. Um, if you're copying and pasting text from elsewhere and it looks weird when you paste it in, uh, you can highlight it, clear out all the formatting and any extraneous formatting that was on it from its original location will be removed. Um, this is the table creator. This is really good. You just drag and drop on a table like this. And it gives you a table just like that. And then we have all these tools to edit it, make it longer, shorter, remove cells, things like that. Um, very simple table tool. Right, we'll just leave it. Um, okay, so that is going to be uh, the kind of center text box where we put all of our information about the assignment, details of it, what you want from students, things like that. Um, scrolling down here, we have more of the, uh, the hard um, settings of the assignment, really, rather than the uh, informational details, the soft details. So here we have the points, the total points, how much you want this assignment to be worth, 15 points, 150, 115,000. Um, there's no limit. I don't think I've ever seen a limit. It's just uh, the limit is uh, as many points as you can keep track of. <laughs> um, so yeah, 15 points, something like that. Uh, the assignments group, again, I mentioned earlier when we were on the assignments page, um, you can create separate groupings for those assignments uh, chapter one, chapter two, whatever. Um, this is where you would select the group in which you would like this assignment to be located. 
Uh, display grade as, this is as it sounds, exactly how you want the grade to be displayed. Uh, everything in Canvas does still come down to points. Everything is calculated by points at the, at the, the base level of the grade book. Um, however, you can choose how it displays. Um, so for example, if you click percentage, uh, giving a student a 15 would show 100% to that student in the grade book on that graded assignment rather than showing 15 out of 15. Um, so again, really just depends on the instructor, the course, how you do your grading, how you communicate grades. Complete, incomplete is going to be all or nothing. They either get 15 or zero. That's the only one that really differs specifically. Um, I, I don't think I've ever seen anyone grade assignments on a GPA scale, but you can do that. Again, it will just um, kind of proportionally, you know, uh, a three out of four uh, or 3.0 out of four is going to be, you know, 75%, that kind of thing. I don't know why you would use it. Um, not graded is going to be another one that can be used uh, occasionally. Um, this is just going to be informationally. It would be worth 15 points. So students would, it would be a practice quiz, a practice assignment, things like that. Uh, but in most cases, you'll just do points, percentage, uh, letter grade, things like that. Uh, next one is going to be submission type. Um, this refers to how these students will be giving you their work. Um, so the options we have here are going to be no submission. Uh, so this is going to be if students have already done something that is not submittable or not to be submitted, and you're just awarding them a grade. So a, uh, a presentation that wasn't recorded, a um, uh, 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 attendance at a external event outside of school, something like that, something where they're not submitting something, but you still need a column in the grade book where you can enter their 15 out of 15 points for going to the Hamlet play that was at a local theater, that type of thing. Um, so that is no submission. Online is going to be what you're mostly going to be using. We'll skip that for a second. Uh, on paper, if they're submitting something to you on paper, this is very similar to no submission. Uh, there's not a digitalized submission place for students. Um, it is just, it does, however, give you the option to scan, or you can scan externally and upload a file for the students. I don't know if I've ever seen that used outside of uh, 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 like art projects, things like that. Um, and external tools, this is if you would, uh, similar to the external tools above, if you want to allow students to submit using an external tool, uh, if it's like a Pearson type thing, Cengage, you know, any of those kind of learning tools, um, sometimes they'll have affiliate tools that you'll be able to have students submit through that tool that allows it to use whatever questions, data, whatever is in that tool. Um, this is going to be uh, slightly respective for each given tool. Um, so for more questions about that, you can reach out to us um, individually and we can help you out with that. Um, but again, online is what you're going to be most commonly using uh, for this, uh, uh, for Canvas, I should say, for assignments, because um, this is going to be where students go to the assignment and down at the bottom they have the option to submit something digitally to you in one of many ways. Uh, so the first one is going to be text entry. When you select text entry, students get a text box just like this. So they will have all these same uh, editing and formatting options to upload content, uh, put a photo into their text so they can have the text that they're typing. They can go down here, they can put a photo, they can do some more text. They can go down here, they can put a video, they can do some more text, and then they can have a file at the bottom. Uh, so text entry gives a, a really wide range of options that are available uh, for users, for students to submit. Um, website URL, um, and again, you can uh, select multiples and students will get little tabs of which one they want to select. Uh, website URL is just a website URL. That is the only thing they can submit. They can't submit text or anything. They can't upload a file. So if you're specifically asking for uh, students, submit to me a link to the article that you would like to write your next essay on. You just want a link to an article, you can select websites URL and it will only allow them to submit a website URL. Uh, same thing with media recordings. It will only allow them to upload a media recording, so it won't allow them to upload a you know a Word doc and be like, oh, I was confused, blah blah blah. It's for very it's for specificity of what you would like from students. Uh, student annotation. This is one of the newer ones and a little bit different. Um, uh, long story short, it's uh, you give them a, a document to edit and they return to you an annotated, edited version. Um, the example I love for this one is is kind of like a uh, elementary school, middle school grammar. Uh, uh, correction assignment where students get a paper that has a bunch of grammar and spelling assignments and they go through and make all the annotations and edits, things like that at a college level. Um, so, you know, you upload the file of what you want them to annotate. Again, a practice peer review, you upload the worst paper you ever received from a student years and years ago that you saved or whatever, and you have students uh, annotate it. You upload the file for them. And again, you can use course files or your own respective my file section. Um, 
and they will get all of the annotation tools that you have within SpeedGrader, and we'll go over those a little bit later, but it's, you know, a regular marking tool. You can put a comment on the side and type your comments, put a little uh, section marker um, on there uh, just to kind of show, you know, this is this section was bad. It needs to be retyped, whatever. Um, again, a little bit of a newer one, but a really uh, a very useful option there for student annotations. Um, and then last one is file uploads, just specifically if you want to um, just want students to upload a file. And then this one is really one of the most useful options here is going to be restrict, up, restrict upload file types. So this is where you can specify what types of file, files you want from students. Um, so if you uh, only want a uh, a Word doc or an Excel, um, something like that, or just a PDF of their final project, whatever. Um, you can specify and list the document types that you would like. You just um, uh, separate them by a comma, no spaces in between them, and you can choose what types of files that you would like them to submit, and they cannot submit a file that is not that file type. So that one's really good for specifying what you want from students. Uh, and again, you can submit, or you can select multiples. Um, I wouldn't include student annotations. Uh, but again, selecting multiples will allow students to choose their option. Uh, when they go to submit down at the bottom of the page, they'll see little tabs. We'll see that a little bit later um, on the assignment itself once we get the practice going through it there. Uh, next is going to be submission attempts, unlimited or limited. Uh, unlimited uh, submissions will never be overwritten. They will always be stacked up. You'll always get all of them. They'll be time stamped and you can always view all of them. Uh, within speed grader, students that submit multiple times right beneath their name, we'll see a little drop down, we'll see it a little later. Um, and you can click that drop down and you'll see, you know, uh, August 17th at 3.15pm uh, submission, August 17th at 3.18pm, August 17th at 4.02pm. You can see all those submissions and you can click on them and see what they submitted, see how things change, stuff like that. Um, limited attempts just limits the number of attempts, time or submission attempts, limits the number of times they can submit. So if you only want to give students one or two attempts, um, this is how you would do that. Um, we usually do recommend, um, uh, again, not technically speaking, but more uh, course flow. Um, it's usually a good idea to give students uh, at least two attempts on something. If they submit the wrong file, um, they won't be able to submit again. Canvas isn't able to uh, understand that this was the wrong file, this was an older version, things like that. So they'll have to email you, you'll have to go in, manually grant them an additional attempt. Um, so it's good to give multiple attempts. Again, students can never overwrite their previous attempts. Um, you will see exactly when they submit. So you can see that a student submitted uh, one paper the morning that it was due, and then a different paper 10 minutes before the deadline for it. So, you know, they tried to get it in early and then they worked on it again to see if they could get some more stuff in. And then, you know, it's up to you which one you want to take, things like that. But they will all be there. They'll all be, they'll all be logged. They'll never be overwritten. None will ever go missing or anything like that. Um, so yeah, it's usually a good idea to give, um, we usually recommend at least two attempts. Student makes a mistake, they can upload the correct file. Um, they can probably still send you an email. They can comment on the side of it and say, hey, sorry, that was the wrong one. The first one, that was the draft from days ago, whatever. Here's the final option or here's the final submission. Uh, so next is going to be plagiarism review. Um, the default is turn it in. Um, that is the AU tool that we use for our plagiarism review. Um, and essentially, this is kind of just a shortcut and a uh, somewhat truncated version of Turnitin. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the Turnitin tool, plagiarism review tool. Um, so again, you won't see all of the features within Turnitin here. You will see most of them, the most common ones, the most familiar ones, the most used ones here. Um, you can choose the repository, do not store it, whatever. Um, but yeah, again, these are all the basic Turnitin tools. You can turn it on. You, know, uh, you, you can turn it on here um, for your assignment. You can choose uh, when it shows the report to students. Um, and then with that, students will be able to go to Turnitin to see the um, full expanded information. Um, what you and they will see initially within Canvas is in the gradebook and in SpeedGrader, uh, you will see a little flag with a percentage mark that just gives their uh, similarity score. It will just give that score there. It won't show um, the full report to it. Um, students and you will just click on that and it will take you outside of Canvas over to Turnitin where it shows the full, uh, all the Turnitin stuff that they have on Turnitin. Um, uh, yes, okay, um, so we'll turn this off for now though. Um, limited. Uh, group assignment. If you do want students to be submitting together as a group, uh, which means one or any of the students in a group submits and it shares shares that submission amongst everyone in the group. So when you go to grade, it's not like everyone has to resubmit the same thing. You have to check all of them to make sure everyone submitted the same thing. One person from the group submits and it 
shares that submission with all students when you go through for grading. Um, uh, so you previously create the groups in the people tab. Um, again, we'll go into more detail on that in another training session. Um, but you create your group sets within the people tab, you know, groups one, two, three, and four, and you drag and drop all the students into their respective groups. And then we select the group set that we've already created. I don't have any, so it won't show any in the drop down. Um, but we select our group set here. Uh, we're just creating one because we don't have one. Allow self sign up. You can allow students to choose their groups, or we can create the groups for them. Uh, we'll just leave this unchecked. Um, but We'll ignore most of this for now, um, but yeah, essentially you select the group set that you have previously created on the people tab where you organize students into their groups, and this will automatically make it so one person submits um, and it uh, kind of ascribes that submission to all of them so it's easier to grade. Um, this option here, assign grades to students individually. If you do not check this, when you give a grade to one student in the group, everyone in the group will get the same grade. So it kind of depends on your course, how you handle group assignments, um, if there is... I don't even know what to call it, uh, a, 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 a lazy group project partner policy in your course where if someone doesn't do anything, they get a worse grade, whatever. Um, you want, you'll want to check this box so you can assign those grades to students individually, because um, if it is unchecked, they will automatically all get the same grade, so you can't give differentials if, you know, someone does everything and the other three do absolutely nothing. Um, so that's one to keep in mind for that. Uh, group assignments, uh, are one of the more touchy ones. Um, uh, once it's turned on and students have submitted, uh, if there are any changes that need to be made with that, uh, it's usually recommended to create a new assignment entirely, um, just because making any retroactive edits to the group tool um, can often have some issues of sharing submissions with old members of the group and things like that. Um, but definitely give us a call, shoot us an email if you ever run into an issue like that, and we can walk you through it. We can help you out with that, absolutely. Um, peer reviews, uh, just as it sounds, is going to be a peer review system, so students will submit um, and you will choose the number of peer reviews that they get. So if you have it set to automatically, you can set that every student that submits, students that do not submit do not qualify, every student that submits will get two um, of their peers' submissions to review. Um, so again, this is automatic. As soon as the uh, due date for the assignment hits, they are all sent out automatically. Students are notified. They see it on the right-hand side of the assignment page. They see it in their uh, notifications. They see it in their course information uh, or their course activity stream where they see upcoming assignments. So it, it, it turns into a functional assignment, essentially. Um, so it's very hard for them to, to lose it and to not see it. Um, but yeah, so students will just get two assignments that their peers have submitted. They have those same annotation tools that we'll go over in a bit within Speed Grader. Um, they have those at their disposal to grade and annotate the submission. And then when they submit it, um, it goes to you first. It goes to you and then the student. So you have uh, some control over that. It's not just completely private between the two. Um, you know, if a student just completely tears uh, just rips someone to shreds in the reviews and is very insulting and vulgar and whatever, you'll be able to see that. It's not totally gone. Um, you can also uh, set a date that uh, reviews are assigned. So if you don't want it to be at the due date, um, you can have it after that, two days after whatever it can be discussed, just to delay it, whatever. Um, peer reviews appear anonymously. This one is very useful, again, if you want things to be anonymous. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, though, is that students will need to not put their names in the actual document that they're submitting, uh, because Canvas is not able to uh, um, uh, remove that, essentially. Uh, so Canvas will keep all of the submissions straight, even though there's no name within the document that they're submitting. Canvas keeps it all straight because they know who whose account has submitted each one. Um, so it will show you everything. It will keep everything organized and everything. Um, but yeah, if you are going to do anonymous peer reviews, just make sure um, students either do not put their names or you give students like a number, student number seven, whatever, that they put on there just to differentiate just in case. Um, but Canvas will always keep track of those. Uh, moderated grading. This is going to be if you have any TAs, um, uh, additional graders, additional instructors in the course, and there is a, a group grading aspect to things. Um, but yeah, essentially, this is where uh, most commonly it's with TAs. Um, you will set the number of graders that you have to grade each assignment. Um, your, again, mostly TAs, usually, uh, usually TAs. Uh, your TAs will go through and grade those assignments, and similar to peer reviews, you will see them. So they will be filtered to you first, so you will see how your two TAs graded the one same student's assignment. You will see the grade they gave them. You will see one TA gave them an 89 out of, out of 100, and one gave them an 87 out of 100. So pretty close, you give them an 88 out of 100 or whatever, and then you uh, you push through their final official grade. Um, again, if you have any questions about that one, that's something that is a little bit more detailed. You can reach out to us individually if you have any questions about that one. 
Um, but additionally, uh, this is only something if you want um, if you want to require your TAs to um, each manually grade each one together. Um, if moderated grading is turned off, TAs still have access to the regular speed grader to do grading and things like that. Um, this is just for if you want it to be, um, if you just want that kind of, uh, uh, I guess, group input. If you have, you know, a group of TAs, you want all of them to grade it, or if they're, you know, if they're teaching TAs, if they need that for the experience or something like that, you can have all of them go through it and you'll see, you'll see the, the um, uh, collaborative grades of each one together for each student before you process them through to the student's final grade. Uh, anonymous grading, you cannot view the student grade. So again, this is the same as with peer reviews. Uh, the anonymous grading, make sure students don't put their names in the document or whatever they're submitting, and Canvas will just anonymize them, student number, whatever. You'll go through and grade them uh, anonymously. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, though, if you turn this off, the names will come back. Uh, so it's not something where it's uh, uh, you you have the ability to de-anonymize it. Uh, so it's kind of a self-control thing there with that one. Uh, and last but not least is going to be the assigned to section. This is going to be very, very important. You'll see this on quizzes as well. Uh, anything that is going to be uh, due, submitted, and uh, have any student submissions, you'll have this assigned to category. Um, so by default, everything, every quiz, every uh, assignment you create is going to be assigned to everyone within the course. Um, it doesn't have a due date, which means it is can be submitted anytime until infinity, and it is available from any time in the past until any time in the future. Um, that is by default, and we can add however many of these we like. We can put in just a due date. Just a due date means that any submissions after the due date are just marked as late. It doesn't do anything by default, it just says late. If you want to uh, manually deduct points from them, you can manually deduct them, but it won't automatically do anything until we turn on the late policy in the gradebook, and we'll cover that in a bit. Uh, available from, as it sounds, uh, if we set an available from date, so let's say available from today until Friday, that means students can see the assignment, they can see the name, they can see the details, but they can't get in and submit until August 16th at 12 a.m. And after August 18th at 11.59 p.m., they cannot submit at all. So one of the really useful ways to do this is Rather than saying, you know, my assignment is due on Friday, I'll have it close on Friday so no one can submit after that. What that does in use is uh, students will, of course, miss the deadline and you'll get a bunch of emails Friday night at like 12.01 a.m., sorry, Saturday morning at 12.01 a.m. Oh my gosh, I had email issues, I had computer issues, the router is down, the internet is down for all of Maryland, whatever. Um, so rather than setting the due date to Friday, the date at which it closes and it does not allow any more submissions, uh, we can set the, or sorry, I shouldn't say the due date. We will set the until date for Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. And we will set the due date for Friday at 11.59 p.m. So that means anyone that submits after, or anyone that goes to submit after Friday at 11.59 p.m., they will still be able to submit, but their submissions will be marked as late. So they'll be able to get it in, they'll be able to submit it to you. Um, they'll probably still email you and say, oh my God, I submitted two minutes late. I'm sorry, I meant to submit before it. Can you please remove the late penalty, whatever. Um, but at least you can ignore those until Monday now. Um, so yeah, so this will allow you to still allow um, submissions into an assignment after the due date, um, but they will be marked as late. And then whenever you so choose, whenever you're grading, then you can decide what you want to give them points, not give them points. Um, it just gives you a little bit more flexibility so you don't have to be waiting Friday night to see who's going to submit, who's not going to submit, and who's going to start emailing with excuses, things like that. Uh, one other thing to remember with the assigned to section um, is we can also create custom assigned to categories for a student that may have missed something, a student that may have been sick with an actual um, ailment, excuse, whatever, doctor's note. Um, so for that, we will click add here at the bottom, and you can see we have a completely new assigned to category that is completely separate. It has its own due dates assigned, are available from and until dates, and we can create it for just one student. So the student in this class is Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker was sick. He got a doctor's note. It's legit. Um, so you can see here when we add Luke Skywalker here, what used to be everyone, what used to be assigned to everyone is now everyone else. So everyone in the class that's not Luke Skywalker has access during these dates. Luke Skywalker, because he was sick, he has all of next week because he was really sick, whatever. And he has his due date, no, oh, no, on Friday. Uh, we can create as many of these as we need for as many students. 
Uh, we can create it for an entire section if we have multiple sections within our course. Uh, if we have an undergraduate and a graduate section and we want to give the undergraduate section uh, a little bit more time on an assignment, we can just assign it to, the, again, this is just because it's a blank demo course. Uh, we can just assign the entire section of, imagine this says undergraduate, whatever. We can assign them a wider window. They have a little bit more time to create, to uh, um, uh, complete the assignment. Uh, one thing to keep in mind also is that we need to always keep the assignments assigned to everyone. If it's no longer assigned to someone, um, it's almost like they don't exist with it. They don't qualify for it. If you go to the grade book, it'll be grayed out. It, you won't be able to enter a grade for them. Uh, so say, for example, we didn't have these here. We just had everyone. And Luke Skywalker comes to, to, comes to you with a doctor's note. And you're like, oh my gosh, OK, I will reopen that assignment. We go like this. And we assign it to Luke Skywalker. And we hit say we're save and publish. Uh, this means. Uh, the rest of the class cannot see the assignment. The rest of the class's submissions are not visible anymore. They can be recovered in most cases, though. Um, their grades are no longer showing. They can be recovered in most cases, though. Um, so this is something we always want to avoid. We can add as many additional categories as we need. And we can see, again, it goes to everyone else. But we never want to delete any. We always want to change them or add additional. Um, and we always want to keep in everyone else unless you're assigning them to students individually, in which case you just want to make sure there's one for every single student. We'll go back to everyone. We'll leave it open. So we have our assignment here. We have all our details. Uh, we have all our options for students to submit. This is kind of the quick checklist I usually recommend uh, instructors go through. It has a title. It has details. It has total points. It has a means to submit. And it has a window in which students are able to submit. Um, if we just click Save, it won't publish it. But we can click Save and Publish because we're ready to publish this assignment. So now that we have our assignment complete, um, this is kind of what it'll look like to students. Um, we'll go into, uh, I'll actually uh, go into Luke Skywalker's actual account because I can. This is an admin uh, capability. This isn't something teachers are able to do. Um, so now we're in, this is the view for a student. Oh, sorry, I'll actually go back. So we can see here under our course summary, we have assignment number one. Under assignments, we have assignment number one out of 15 points. We'll click on the title here. We can see assignment number one, the title. There is no due date. If it did have a due date, it would have that listed here. I should have probably should have left that in there. Uh, the total points available and the means by which students are able to submit. And these are the details. This is what it is saying. Uh, give me two pages on chapter one or whatever. Students will click start assignment. And here is where you can see they have the different options for how they can submit. You can see here. This is where we toggled all the submission types. These are the different options they have available to them. So these are the external tools that are already set up. This is if they want to upload media, if they want to upload or uh, submit a website URL. Text entry, again, you see they have these same options here for uploading their files they have, you know, if they have user files, if they have user media, things like that, or just a regular file upload. So we'll type in this student's response here, and we will. We'll just submit it. We'll just submit with that as the student response. So Luke Skywalker went in, yay, he submitted, he sees the confetti. Once the student submits, you can see over here in the uh, under submission, they have that they have submitted. The date they submitted, submission details, if we click on this, we can see this is what they submitted. So right now it is paper view. We can do plain text view to see if they used formatting, things like that on there. Um, and this is where both the student and the teacher can leave comments. So the student can say, I think this is some of my best work. They can leave a media comment, attach a file of their uh, whatever on there, save. Uh, you can see again the resubmit assignment button here because we did allow unlimited, I believe, um, submissions to this assignment. So the student can go in and say, oh man, I really wanted to upload a file instead of that. So I will go and I will upload what something without student uh, information and sample video. So, oh man, I totally forgot. I need to submit this instead. Processing. Yay, submitted again. So we can see submission details. Now it shows this time. For students, they will only see the most recent submission. Again, sorry, my dog is barking at the landscaping crew is outside. Um, so again, what we have here is we have the most recent submission. Students will only be able to see their most recent submission rather than you as the instructor, who will be able to see all of them. 
Um, so if we leave this student view again, this is how the students will see it. Um, let me just close my door here. Sorry about that. About that. Uh, so again, this is the instructor view. So this is how you will see the assignment once students have submitted. So under related items here, once you have students submitting, you will see the speed grader tool, and you will also see the option to download submissions. If you want to download all of them just as a backup, as a fail safe, if you like to grade uh, on your tablet in Microsoft Word or something like that, uh, you can do it through there. Um, but most commonly, you'll be going through the speed grader tool. Um, that is the grading tool within Canvas. Um, so you can see here as we go in, uh, it changes quite a bit. Uh, starting in the upper left-hand corner, this icon here, um, this is to go back over to the gradebook. This icon here uh, is, a, is a little bit complicated. It's been quite a few different things within Canvas, um, but this is going to be the uh, hide, um, uh, hide submissions button. Uh, or, or Sorry, what is the official name of it? Um, uh, grade posting policy hide um, button. Uh, so we'll go over this a little bit more when we get to the grade book in a little bit more detail. Um, but long story short, if you want to um, grade everyone at the same time and then push out all of them, this somewhat works in tandem with that. Um, I'd recommend avoiding this. It, it, it's, it's just very confusing. They tried to fix it a couple uh, God, years ago now, um, and it, 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 it's, it's just very confusing. I just wouldn't recommend using it. There are better ways to do it. Um, right here, we have settings. We just have some options here, some short options, um, listing students the order, hide students' names, again, if you want to slightly anonymize it. Keyboard shortcuts, again, if you prefer using keyboard shortcuts for things, you can use them here. And help down here just brings us to the Speed Grader um, uh, Canvas Guides page directly. Back over here, we have the assignment title. We can click on this just to go back to the main assignment page. We have our dates here and also the, uh, the section in which the student is located. Um, so. As I mentioned earlier, when students submit multiple times, you can always see all of those submissions. They never go away. They're just stacked up. And you can see here, here are the two submissions for Luke Skywalker. The first one, which was that text option. And then Luke remembered, oh my gosh, I forgot to upload the video as well. So here's the video that they uploaded as well. We can click on that here and we can download the video and we can view it there. Um, oh, uh, it will also timestamp all of them. Uh, if there are multiple days, it will have multiple timestamps um, for each of them. And again, no matter how many times a student submits, it will never overwrite. It will just keep stacking up there. Uh, again, you can see the comments from the students here. And you as a teacher can say, yes, this is great work. Again, timestamped from me as the instructor. You can add attachments, you can add media, you can uh, leave an audio comment if you'd like to leave audio comments, and you can also download uh, the submission comments if a student leaves a particular nasty comment that needs to go to a uh, advisor or someone or dean or something, uh, you can download those submission comments. Um, again, also, if you ever run into anything like that, uh, please reach out to us. We can document everything, put everything in a big usable uh, um, uh, 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 yeah, we have means for that. If you ever run into any issues with a student uh, using any uh, vulgar language or anything like that, and you want to save it and send it places, definitely reach out to us and we can help out with that. Uh, unfortunately, we have to deal with that occasionally. Um, so again, this is all the information for this one student. Uh, this course only has one student, but if there were multiple students, uh, clicking this little arrow here, we'd get a drop down of all the students that are listed in the course. Um, this little orange dot just means they have submitted, but it has not yet been graded. Uh, before they submit, their name is kind of grayed out. It's kind of a little bit lighter. Uh, and then once we give them a grade, it will have a green check mark. So we reviewed both of them. We think, oh man, and I'll also it will show. Um, this is not the most recent submission, so that will show for all, but the most recent submission, just to remind you, the students are submitting a very similar thing, so you can get the most recent one. Um, and at the bottom here is where you can just enter their grade. So, you know, yep, did a great job. You're getting a 15 out of 15. We could enter. You can see the grade for 15. Um, the grade is still for the student, regardless of where it shows. Um, it just shows next to them wherever you entered the grade, essentially, just to remind you you gave them a grade when you were looking at this version, just to remind you exactly that. You were looking at this one when you gave them this grade, just to have that little bit more of information. Yeah. And now you can see Luke Skywalker has that green check mark, and we can move on to the next student. We can use these arrows to cycle through if there were more students in this course. Um, and we can use this one to go back. Uh, here at the top, you can see one out of one are graded. If there were more students, it would say one out of 10 graded, something like that. Uh, I would show you the average for all students, uh, you know, 13.25 out of 15, I mean, the 
what is it, 89 something percent, I'm not gonna know. Um, and then just the total number of students, um, or the number of the number of students that you are on, you know, as you cycle through, you are on the fifth of however many students. Uh, yes, uh, question, Randolph. Yeah, I just had a quick question. Do you recommend under the assessment to actually change that to percentages? If you just leave it 15 out of 15, is that going to cause more problems, do you think, down the road for you? Uh, no, regardless of the uh, display grade as setting, um, it'll all calculate the same in Canvas. It's literally just how it displays. Oh, um, so, yeah, so even if it's even if it shows, uh, you know, 95%, 100% for the student, um, it's still, you know, secretly 15 out of 15. Canvas still treats it as a 15 out of 15 for grading reasons. It just shows 100% to the student, that kind of thing. Oh, I see. So you said that, that makes sense. So what you were saying before, the whole course is really built on a point system. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's kind of a behind the scenes happening. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So everything uh, you will have to set everything to a number of points for the value. Um, but yeah, you can still treat your course as percentages, uh, treat your course as uh, GPA points if you'd like to grade everything in GPA points. Um, but yeah, it was still this, the, the, yeah, behind the scenes, it will still grade everything by points. Um, but yeah, it will show you everything in percentages and everything will still be the same. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah, of course. No problem. I like questions about the grade book and math because in my, let's see, I started with Canvas. Uh, I actually used Canvas in college as well. Uh, I went to Indiana University and they were one of the first pilot schools. Um, so I started using Canvas in 2011, um, used it through college a little bit um, after that, um, and then went back to Canvas. So in all, it's since 2011, -ish, let's call it that. In all of my time using Canvas, I've never seen any um, errors or issues with grading in the grade book and the math. So I always like questions about that because that grade book is always solid. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, so yeah, that was just about everything within speed grader can for. Can oh, I have, can I follow up that question? So sure. if it's by points, it doesn't matter or not if I give a low points assignment, let's essay five, because it's easier for me to calculate, you know, with five points than hundred percent. But but assignment actually takes 20% of the total final grade. Is that okay to give just five points instead of 100? Uh, yes, if you're doing, uh, if you're doing grade weighting, um, so okay. if you're weighting the full grade, um, that somewhat removes the, the, the specific point value, um, the relative point value still matters. So, you know, a five point assignment will still uh, uh, affect the grade, half as much as a 10 point or, or opposite uh, as a 10 point assignment, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, if you're using the weighting feature within Canvas within the assignment groups, um, yeah, it somewhat negates the usage of points because then it recalculates everything with the weighting for the percentages and then it uses that for the final grade. Yes. Okay, that's great. Yep. Thank you. Yep, of course, great question. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, so let me see, sorry, I have two notes. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, okay, awesome, 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 awesome. Um, so we will head back to the assignment page real quick. Um, and piggybacking off that question real quick, perfect timing. Um, so I mentioned earlier, uh, we can create multiple groups. So uh, participation assignments and essays. So we have our multiple assignment groups here. Um, and as we were mentioning there uh, with uh, weighting of assignment groups, uh, the weighting is attached to each group. Um, so once we have our group set up, let's imagine there are assignments in the rest of those just so we can save some time. Um, we will go just to the right of this blue plus assignment button here. We have these three dots and we will choose assignment groups weight. We'll check this box to turn it on. And you'll see here, we have each of our assignment groups and we can set the weight for each of them. So if we're doing, uh, well, yeah. we can do that. It, it, it's, it's just a little messy. Uh, we'll do 40, 40, and 20. We'll click save. And then you'll see here within each assignment group, it shows percentage of total. So visually, it makes it a lot easier. Any assignments that are placed within the assignments group collectively will be worth 40% of the total. Um, so, you know, say a student gets 
uh, uh, 13 out of 15 on this. So 13 out of 15 percent is uh, whatever, 80 something. Um, so that percentage is used with the 40 percent of the total um, multiplied, you know, 0 0.8 times 0.4, and then you get a percentage, and that is added up to the same for these two, and that is how we get the total. Um, it is explained visually in the guide um, uh, for grade weighting, um, and I will, um, I'll throw that in the chat uh, right at the end too, so that's kind of saved in there, um, just so we can save some time there. Um, but yeah, this is where we do our grade weighting, um, and this will affect the grade, the um, assignment weights. Um, again, we can just drag and drop if we need to move an assignment, if it needs to be weighted in a different group. And as we have more assignments, there will be more in each group. Awesome. Waiting. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, cool. We will head over to quizzes real quick. Um, again, looks very similar to the assignments page. Um, with, uh, with quizzes, there's only one group, just course quizzes. Um, again, I mentioned anything graded will come to the assignments page. So once we make the quiz, it will still be here and it will be organized into a um, assignment group. So we can still set a weight for that group. Um, so again, we have a blue plus quiz button as we did the green, or excuse me, the blue plus assignment button. Um, and then we have the quiz engine. We have classic quizzes and new quizzes. Um, we're going to recommend that you start with classic quizzes. It's a lot more of a simpler uh, user interface, a little bit easier to use. It has 95% of the features. New quizzes just has a couple more question types um, that are a little bit more advanced, but we definitely want to start with classic quizzes and we can work on new quizzes later. And there's a separate training for new quizzes as well, because uh, it's a little bit complicated. Um, so we will click Submit for Classic Quizzes. And again, looks very familiar. So we have our unnamed quiz, our title at the top. Um, the information for quizzes, however, this is not where we are going to put our questions. This is where we're going to put uh, this quiz covers chapters four through six in your book and the last three weeks of in-class lectures, things like that, general information about the quiz. Um, you'll see this questions tab up here. We'll get to a little bit more later. This is where we create our individual questions for the quiz. Um, so again, this is where we put our information. If we scroll down again, and you know, remember, we see all the same icons. We can kind of start seeing how these are going to be very similar. We'll see this text box a lot. And if we scroll down again, just as we had on the assignments page, we have our specific settings that apply to the quiz. Um, so quiz type, again, similarly, we have a couple different options. Practice quiz is just not going to be graded. Graded quiz is graded. Big surprise there. Uh, graded survey surveys, you set the number of points and students will automatically receive the total uh, full credit for taking the survey. So it is a uh, essentially a participation rate. You complete the survey, you get 10 points or whatever. Ungraded survey is just the opposite. They just take a survey, there's no points associated. It's just for the information. Uh, so graded quiz is more com most common, so we'll stick with that. Uh, again, this is the assignment group we uh, place it into. Again, it can be moved, but again, um, this is how it will be applied to waiting. So we'll just about put it in participation assignments. Uh, shuffle answers. This is going to be the A, B, C, D answers you have uh, within each question type for multiple choice question types. Um, if you choose shuffle answers, it will shuffle them in a different order for every student. Uh, this is really useful if students are taking a quiz in class on their computers, tablets, uh, lab. Uh, laptops, things like that, just so students can't look over and see, oh, question number one, they picked the last option. I'll pick the last option. It will shuffle them in a different order for every student. Um, one thing to keep in mind, and we'll get to that when we get to the questions, um, is make sure not to include like in the actual text for the question, A dot, and then the question B period, you know, that kind of thing. Um, Canvas does that automatically. Um, so shuffle answers is a good thing to keep turned on. Uh, time limit, this is the limit they have once they start the quiz to work within the quiz. Once this time limit ends, they are locked out of the quiz. Uh, this is different from the availability window. This is the time, uh, again, this is the available window within which the quiz is available. You know, you have Monday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. to take the quiz, but you only have 45 minutes to actually be in the quiz within that window. So any time between, you know, 8 a.m. and 5 p.m., they can use their 45 minutes to take the quiz. So that's the difference there. Uh, again, allow multiple attempts, similar to multiple submissions within the quiz or within assignments. You can allow multiple attempts at the quiz. And again, all of those will be saved. Um, you can uh, select a default grade to keep just so you don't have to manually go in and select them. Highest grade, latest grade, average grade. Again, depends on your course specific things and how many attempts you would like to allow. So if you wanna give everyone two attempts on the quiz and then we keep the highest or the average score, you can give them that. Oops. Um, 
So again, allow multiple attempts, just like with assignments. Uh, I will never overwrite any subsequent attempts. All will be kept. You can go through and view all of them at any time. Uh, this next box here is going to be related to what students can see of their submission after they have submitted. Um, so totally unchecked, students can't see anything once they submit. It's in there. They can't get it back until you manually change something to let them see what they submitted. Uh, if we check this box when students submit, students will see what they submitted, but they will not see, uh, it, it will not be graded essentially. Uh, or sorry, it will be graded, but they won't see the correct answers for that. They will just see, oh, this was wrong. They won't tell them what though. Uh, only once after each attempt, that just means as it sounds, right after they submit, as soon as they go in or whenever they go in to view the quiz, as soon as they leave it, they're done. Um, so they only get one attempt. That kind of reduces the uh, propensity for students to be able to save things or share information, things like that. Um, and let students see the correct answers. So this is letting them see exactly not only that they got it wrong, but what the correct answer is. Uh, only after their last attempt, that's a very good thing to turn on if you're going to allow multiple attempts, uh, if you don't want them to get it, if, if it's not a quiz where you want them to get everything right so they learn it, that kind of thing. Um, only after their last attempt means if you, they allow multiple attempts, only after the last one they can see the correct answers. Uh, and if this, you can also choose when they can see those correct answers, so you can make it a couple days after the quiz, just in case someone is sick and you had to add an additional assigned to category for Luke Skywalker, you don't want anyone to share all the answers with Luke Skywalker because he can still take the quiz, that kind of thing. So that's why you would set a specific date after which then they can see the correct answers, things like that. Uh, showing one question at a time, just as it sounds, rather than having a full page where students scroll all the way through and can see all the questions, they can just see one at a time. There's a little next button they click at the bottom when they're uh, ready to move on. Uh, lock questions after answering. That means they can only go forward once they've answered a question. They can't go back and change it. Um, so if you have, you know, something that answers a previous question later in the quiz, you'll want to turn that on so students can't backtrack and be like, oh, this question gave me the answer to that one because they needed it for the question, that kind of thing. Uh, quiz restrictions here. These are more security-based things. Uh, requiring an access code, this is the same for everyone. Um, so this can be useful for, uh, you know, uh, turning your essay to me and uh, I will give you a passcode or whatever. You know, I will give you the password to access the quiz, things like that. Um, again, it is the same for everyone. Um, uh, you can make it a very randomized looking code in which students may believe that it is randomized and you can uh, omit the information that it's the same for everyone and you can say here is your access code for the quiz uh, but it is the same for everyone um uh Yeah, that's just kind of a, um, uh, uh, <laughs> a little bit of a trick there, um, uh, just from working with Canvas for a while. Uh, and then last filter IP addresses. Uh, this is going to be if you are specifically working uh, in a computer lab and students need to take the quiz in the computer lab, um, you, you would specify the IP address for that lab so they can only take the quiz there. I think. And again, the assigned to category uh, is the same, uh, is going to be for um, uh, assignments. You put in the same information, add additional assigned to categories for additional students. We can create as many, but again, we just want to keep it assigned to everyone. Um, so again, now up at the top, we'll go to this questions tab here real quick. Um, so this is where we actually do the building of the quiz. Um, so um, here, we will start with the new question tab. This is if you are building your uh, quizzes from scratch, which uh, most of you will be um, we'll start with new question here. By default, um, it will be multiple choice. That's just the first one on the list. Um, but here we have all of our different question types that we can choose from. Um, multiple choice, as you can see here, you put the question, uh, who is, was the first president of the United um, States? There we go. And Washington, Jefferson, Adams, Bruno Mars. So you can see here, uh, we have our correct answer here, which is George Washington, and it is listed first. If we did not select the uh, shuffle answers option, they would always be shown in this order. So if you always have the correct answer first, it will always show first to everyone in the quiz. Uh, we can change the correct answer, by using this arrow, you can see it kind of shows a little bit shaded and we can click here and select it was Bruno Mars, it was not George Washington. 
But again, this is again why uh, choosing shuffle answers um, is a good option to use here um, for, for most of your quizzes, um, for any quiz really, it's just a very useful tool. Um, so again, we have this question created, we have our possible answers. Um, we see here these little uh, uh, ellipses we have listed here. Um, these are just going to be for comments that students re will receive um, if they answer that question uh, right, wrong, or regardless. Um, so here, if they get the question correct, here you can leave comments that they get for leaving it, for getting it correct, comments if they get it wrong, and comments regardless. So general answer comments is really great for if you want students to specifically get information from a question for a next question, you can say, great job or whatever, keep in mind, blah, 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 for question, whatever, things like that. Um, just general comments, again, that users will get after they, um, uh, when they go back later to view the quiz and the questions. Um, so you can see here, we click save. Um, uh, I'm sorry, let me back up a little bit here. Uh, so we have update question, and then we have save, save and publish here down at the bottom. Uh, one thing to always keep in mind is you need to update the question before you hit save for the quiz as a whole. This is the save the whole quiz, and you need to update the question first, um, or else it, uh, it won't be saved. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. So let's say again, we create our second question here. Uh, for this one, we want a true or false question. And you can see here it auto populates with just the options of true or false here. Um, and we can select true or false. Again, we have those same options there. Um, and you can see here in the drop down, there are quite a few different options here. Fill in the blank, fill in multiple blanks, multiple answers, multiple drop downs, uh, multiple drop downs you set where. So it's kind of like a fill in the blank. Um, the first president of the United States was, and you put in, you know, president number one, and then you put the different options. So there are multiple drop downs that students can choose from and you generate them um, as, as you see fit, as many as you need for it. Um, so there are quite a few different uh, question types. Um, you can kind of play around with those. Again, that's a great place to use your sandbox to just play around with different question types. Um, one of the open-ended one is going to be essay question. Um, you just put in, uh, this is going to be great for if you have a, a document already created with questions. It's just a couple questions um, that are based off a large text or document or something. Uh, you can put that in here. You can put the whole paragraph up at the top. And then at the bottom beneath it, you can have question one, question two, and question three. If it's just three quick short answer questions, and then students will get a text box just like this for their answer. And you can, you can say in the directions, um, you know, copy and paste the above uh, numbered section to submit your answers. So they can just copy this, paste it into their answer section, and then they'll answer questions one, two, and three just there like that. Uh, the last one I want to mention is the text, no question. So if you don't want a question, if you just want text, if you just want to put a, a, a big um, uh, a reading in the middle of the quiz, and then the next eight questions all um, uh, apply to that quiz or to that um, writing portion with just separate questions, you can just put the text in here, update the question, and it won't have any, it won't have any other options there. Um, you know, won't have any options for submissions there. So we'll click save here. And we'll see it was unpublished. We will just publish it real quick. And we will go in from the student view. I'm actually sorry, let me go in as Luke Skywalker specifically. Excuse me, my cat's now at the door. Got a whole farm of animals. My wife works at the Humane Society, so that's expected. So I will log in here as Luke Skywalker again. Head over to our quiz that we have created again under our course summary. We take this quiz and you'll see here how we have these options here. Again, I did not select shuffle these answers. So you can see they're just in the same order and it's gonna be Washington. We can see our essay question here. Here's the information for our essay. Students can just copy one, two, three, go like this and say, this is my answer for one. This is my answer for two. This is my answer for three. And their submission will come all together. And you can see here for the text, uh, no questions. It is just text. There's no questions. Big surprise there. So you can see the student has submitted. It has saved. And you can see the correct answers are currently hidden. Um, but it does tell the student 
your submission attempt number one, less than a minute score, one out of two. It does score any multiple choice questions. But we can see here because the students cannot yet see the quiz, they can't get to it yet. We back out of the student view. Under related items for quizzes, you'll have a couple more options. Quiz statistics um, is going to be right as, just as it sounds. Statistics for the quiz. We only have one student, so we don't have many data points yet. Um, but it will show you the, the, the dispersion of students um, and how they answer each question. You know, how many answers A, B, C, D, things like that. Moderate this quiz. Um, this is going to be the tool we use if we need to add any accommodations for students. So if students get time and a half, extra attempts, things like that. Um, so Luke Skywalker, say for example, um, he has no attempts left, but he had some technical issues that were verifiable. Uh, we can go in and we can give him one extra attempt and we can give him an extra 15 minutes. So you can see here, everyone already gets 45 minutes. We just want to give him an extra 15 minutes on top of that, just because he was having some technical issues, just to give him a bit of a hand, a bit of a leg up, you can say. Um, and you can see here, gets extra 15 minutes on each attempt, so 15 minutes on top of the 45, and now he has one attempt left. You can see here, we can click on Luke's name here, and we can see his submission here, just Luke's submission. And we can also go into speed grader over here, and very similar to the assignment, we'll see the same grading panel over here on the right, the same drop down of all the students, the same information, but we'll just see the quiz here instead of their um, uh, uh, assignment submission. Uh, essay questions, again, will need to be graded manually, just about everything else that you can put in. Um, uh, you can codify the correct answer. So like this multiple choice, it grades it automatically. I don't need to do anything there. I can just put in one point for that. This text question was worth nothing. Uh, and then down at the bottom, we have fudge points. So if you just need to add points for whatever reason, this is where you can do it. They're not associated with any question. They're not associated with anything. They're just points you can give. They can be extra credit. They can be uh, the student helped out with something so they get two points on their next quiz, whatever. That's where we can add those fudge points. Um, we can also remove them. They will show there. So if we add two fudge points, um, click update scores, it'll show you know uh, three out of two. Um, and it'll still show that too there so we can come back and remove it later if they no longer deserve those points or whatever. Um, same deal with comments in here, uh, or comments over here, um, back and forth with the student. And then as well, if there are multiple submissions, you'll get that drop down right here uh, showing those. Um, yeah, everything's just about the same as the assignments. Uh, so now we will head over to the grade book here and go over some of the grade book items here. Um, so in the grade book, it will look very Excel. Uh, oh, sorry, let me check the questions real quick. Um, well, earlier workshop, workshop this morning. Um, yeah. Not, Hi, I sorry. Hope, I had a, just, um, just a quick question. I attended a workshop this morning for the general canvas and they quickly went over the, you know, how to do the quizzes, just basic. And it, of course we were given the classic quizzes and new quizzes and the instructor this morning told us, well, they're phasing out a classic quizzes. So make sure to just, or she advised us to use new quizzes. So I was just wondering if, you know. Um, they're, yeah, they're phasing it out, um, yeah. but it, it, it's, uh, it's likely a five to seven year phase out. Um, okay. So it, yeah, it's not anything soon. Um, there are uh, there are tools to convert classic quizzes to new quizzes. Okay, um, great. Okay, so if we just yeah. do the classic quizzes because it's simple for you know mm -hmm. first time starters, mm -hmm. and yep. if they do phase out for whatever reason and we needed to transfer that to the new quizzes, we we'd be able to do that pretty easily on on Canvas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it, right. it's one click. It's yeah, it's just a migrate button. Uh, well, uh, um, well, okay. Actually, no. They may change it. If they do phase it out, they would automatically migrate everyone's content. Um, this is something, again, they were talking about when I still worked at Canvas in 2020. 2020. <laughs> um, okay. So, yeah. yeah, it's something they've been talking about for years. Uh, new quizzes before it was new quizzes was quizzes.next, and that was before I even started. Uh, the first new quizzes tool came out when I was still in college in 2013. And that was when they were like, oh, we're phasing out classic quizzes. Um, so that should put okay. it in perspective. It's and I have one <laughs> very, one more quick short question. Um, do you, uh, does, do you guys have like um, specific workshops for the new quizzes? Because I realized that there were a lot more functionality, like hotspots, 
those seem really interesting and good, but just, you know, it's a little bit overwhelming um, for first time users. So I was wondering if you're planning to offer just um, new quiz specific, I don't know, tutorials or workshops, mm -hmm. or if you have any, yeah, suggestions yeah, about, I, yeah. I think so. I think so. I'm pretty okay. sure I, uh, uh, we, we we don't personally plan the the the, the sessions. They're planned by I OCL, uh, so okay. I don't I don't have the full list. I don't know exactly. Um, I just know which ones I'm doing. Um, I I think I am doing the new quizzes one um, in okay. a couple weeks at some point. But yeah, there there should be one. There, there, I'm definitely I'm pretty sure there is one. If not, uh, definitely shoot us an email at canvas at american.edu, um, and we can we can create one. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, of course, yeah. Um, blah, blah, blah. Grade book, yeah. Uh, so back to the grade book again. It is a, a very simple looking kind of Excel spreadsheet. The students will go down on the left side. Uh, the assignments will go over to the right. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is when you see uh, a title and then out of a number of points. Oh, I'm trying to highlight that more. Um, when you see out of a number of points, uh, that is an actual item. Uh, but when you see uh, X percent of grade or nothing below it, this is the assignment group. So this is the subtotal. These are going to be subtotals. So any assignments that are located in the assignments group, you'll get a subtotal here. Anything in the participation assignments, you'll get a subtotal here. Um, these are not editable. Where we can edit these grades here, you'll see it'll update there because it's it's just a subtotal. So we put 12 and it updates there. Um, so these, uh, that's one confusing thing in Canvas. People will be like, oh, I need to change uh, the grade for an essay or they'll have an assignment group that is just called essay singular instead of plural and and they'll get confused which which essay column is the actual one um and yeah you just want to look for out of the number of points that's the actual item where you can enter a grade it's just showing like that it's good um and then versus where you cannot enter a grade um so some of the other tools real quick because we only got a couple minutes here um again the grade book is is, is super rock solid uh I, i've never seen any errors with it any calculation errors in the 12, 13, 14 years I've been using Canvas in total. Um, so yeah, it's going to be pretty rock solid here. Uh, we do have Learning Mastery. That's going to be something more advanced. Individual grade book. Uh, if you just want to look at one student specifically, uh, whatever section they are in, uh, you know, whatever student, um, you can go through and generate and just view the content for this one student. There's not very much right now, so it doesn't look like a lot. But in longer classes at the end of the term, it's a lot easier to look at the one student's grades um, in, in, in this format and get things a little bit uh, easier to view. We'll go back to the traditional. Oh, actually, go back up. For a great book history real quick, this is fantastic, especially if you have TAs working within your course uh, or anyone else that's doing any grading. The great book history will show you everything that has ever happened with grades, and it's fantastic. So you can see here, um, the student, the grader, the artifact is just the item before, after the current grade, before the change, after the change. Uh, if it shows is not available, that just means it was automatically graded by Canvas. So that means uh, Luke Skywalker submitted the unnamed quiz and not available Canvas. Canvas graded it before there was no grade and afterwards it was a one out of two. Then I went in later to that unnamed quiz and gave him a two out of two. And then again, I re-entered the two out of two. So here you can see, you can search by student, you can search by grader. So if one TA has been given a lot of weird grades, you can look up that TA and see that they gave everyone hundreds on everything and they probably haven't been grading anything. Um, but fantastic place to look also for you just to have the information of what things used to be, what the quiz had previously been or what the students graded previously been on a quiz some time ago. Uh, this is where that can be done. Traditional grade book view. We have a couple filters here. We can rearrange um, the order we see things by assignment name, due date. Uh, we can filter by assignment groups, uh, statuses we can see. Um, so these are going to be when you click into uh, a cell for an assignment, we can click this little arrow and you can set a little status. So you can just show a student, this is late. This is missing a certain number of days. This is excused. Excused means rather than getting a zero out of 15, they get a zero out of zero. It doesn't even count for them. Uh, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. Um, so that's just something uh, just for you organizationally. So you can, when you have a big full grade book of a bunch of students and assignments, you can just pick out the blue ones and you can know the blue ones are late, whatever, missing. We'll just re-enter that grade. You can see everything. Again, all of these always update automatically, the totals and everything. Um, this exclamation point here, student does not include, uh, or score does not include essays because it has no points possible. Um, 
You will sometimes see this exclamation point in the total column. Um, it usually just means uh, something is out of zero if you have like an extra credit assignment that is out of zero. So you can give students, you know, five out of zero to get extra credit, things like that. Um, that will sometimes confuse Canvas. That's the most common one. Um, uh, but yeah, you'll see that one occasionally. Also, if you have assignments for which grades are hidden, so you know you're hiding all the grades from students. I mentioned that earlier. Um, that is called the grade posting policy. So you can see here automatically post grades. That means as soon as you enter a grade for a student, they can see it automatically. Manually post grades means you can post the grades, but until you go into the actual assignment, click these three dots and select. Well, they're all posted, but you would have the option to post grades and say, well, here, we'll hide them. So grades are hidden right now because you selected the manual grade posting policy. Then you went in and entered the grade for this assignment. Okay, now you can see it's got the little eye with the line through it. It's set to manual grade posting policy. The student will not see this grade until we go in and manually post them. Post grades to students. So again, this is if you have a lot of assignments or a lot of students in your course, uh, a lot of essays that you're grading over a couple of days, but you want everyone to get their um, uh, grades at the same time, you can set it to manual grade posting policy. Automatic again, students will get those grades immediately. And you can also set it individually for one assignment. So if you just have one essay that you want to do it for, you can set just that one to manually. That's awesome. All right, so we have just a two, <laughs> almost five, two minutes left. Um, just want to open it up to any quick questions uh, before we finish up here. questions. Awesome, awesome. Uh, well, thank you so much, everyone, for uh, coming to this session. I just want to last but not least over here, uh, if we click on help, uh, we have all our information over here. Uh, up at the top is going to be the Canvas guides. Um, oh, actually, let's open that up. Canvas guides. Um, uh, uh, they change the links. Hold on. Okay, I'll have to fix that. So that should go directly to the Canvas Guides page. Um, let's see where it goes now. Um, they just updated all of this too, so that's why it doesn't go to the same place. Uh, it down. Oops. Okay, cool. So it's not that bad. Instructor Guides. It used to go directly to this page, and I'll throw this one in the chat because this is uh, a very, very, very useful page to have. Where did the chat go? There it is. Everyone. Uh, so this page has uh, subdivided sections for anything you can think of. So assignments. Uh, how do I give extra credit in a course? How do I uh, add moderated assignments? Anything like that. How do I delete an assignment, duplicate an assignment? Any of these little niche things, you'll always be able to find these. Uh, this page is um, uh, uh, up to, kept up to date by Instructure, the company that created Canvas. Um, there's an entire department that keeps these up to date. Not only are these guides for you, these are the official function guides of Canvas. So these are also the official internal guides of how everything has to work, officially has to work in Canvas. These are the internal records of that as well. Um, so these are always accurate. There's a whole team of, it was like 20 or 30 people when I was there. It's probably doubled since then. Um, there's an entire team, it is half engineers, half former teachers and educators um, that create these guides, so they're very clear. Um, let's see, let's go to course import tool. How do I copy content from one course to another? I helped create this, um, or I helped generate some of the content for it. Um, when I used to work at Canvas, this was part of my training. Um, so you can see here it has step-by-step, -step, it has screenshots of everything you're going to be doing, how to search for a course, search for migration content or select migration content, adjust the events and due dates. There are going to be hyperlinks to other guides, how I adjust the events and due dates. Up at the top, there's always going to be in blue notes, updates, things that may be turned on or off, things like that. Um, so the guides are always a great place to look for anything. Uh, additionally, um, we have our information. So right here, 24-7, uh, that is going to be the global Canvas support. They are global. Uh, their main office is in Salt Lake City, where I used to work. Um, they also have offices in uh, Budapest, Brazil, uh, Australia, London, and uh, another one somewhere else I can't remember. 
um, but they're fantastic. They're 24 seven. Uh, they can assist with general Canvas information of general technical things within Canvas. Uh, if you get into specific things that may be AU settings within Canvas, they may not be able to answer those, um, but they are available 24 seven. If you're having a technical issue with something, you can always reach out to them and they can assist you with those kinds of things. Um, so again, this is also them. This is also their 24 seven phone numbers, uh, chat and phone numbers. It goes to the same people, same, uh, same group, same former coworkers of mine. Um, uh, chat is usually just a little bit quicker just because chats tend to work a little bit quicker. Um, but this is going to be us. This is the local team. This is the local myself, my colleagues at AU, technically speaking, I work remote in Oregon. Um, but yeah, canvas at american.edu, that is our email address that goes straight into our ticketing system. If you have any questions, that's usually the quickest way to get in touch with us, canvas at american.edu. Um, you can also give us a call. Um, there are only uh, two slash three of us, though, that are uh, available to answer that phone. Uh, so sometimes we're busy in meetings on other calls. So um, if that does go to a voicemail, though, you can leave us a voicemail, and that goes to our same ticketing system um, as sending us an email would. So you can also call us, leave us a voicemail, leave us your information. We'll call you back as soon as possible when we have uh, a second for that. Um, so that's our information. There are some other things report a problem directly to Canvas. You can also reach out to us and we can report those as well. Um, and I think that's everything. I'm only two minutes over. Last time it was a lot longer. Um, thank you so much for coming, everyone. Uh, if you have any questions, again, shoot us an email at canvas.american.edu. Thank you.